Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to install this LED in the SpeedyB Master HD5 and configure it with switches on our transmitter. As always, I'm Jeff with Tide FPV. Let's dive in. First order of business guys, if you're not already subscribed, please do so. Click that notification bell and you'll be notified when I upload content like this and all others to the channel. So I've had the Speedy B Master HD frame for quite some time. I saw that they had released an LED option for the frame. It may have come in the bind and fly. I believe it does in the newer versions along with some LED strips here on the side. I saw this up on AliExpress. I wanted to pick this up and configure it, add some color to the frame. There's a spot there if on the bottom, the soft mounting. If you use the clear soft mounting, you can see right here, it has a cutout for this hexagon cob LED. So. Today, what we're gonna do, we're gonna solder this up. This version of the SpeedyB 405 V3 flight controller doesn't have the plug, but if you have, I believe the F7, it does have a plug, it plugs directly in. Otherwise, you can solder these three wires up, get this LED going, uh, and then we'll configure it in Betaflight, and I'll see what I can do about getting some switches on our transmitter to change the color and the patterns of the LEDs. Let's get this uh, taken apart, and we'll get it installed and then configure it. All right, the three pads that we're gonna solder up to are right here. This little dotted area, five volt ground, and the LED wire. You got a red, black, and yellow wire. We'll solder those up. Then we're gonna lift the flight stack off and mount it underneath here. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult because I've already built the quad. Uh, typically you would do this beforehand, but I don't even think they had this released when I purchased this frame or when I built this. So here's the little LED that we're gonna install. It's got a plug, but it also has the pads if you wanted to solder that up for some reason or in case you uh, damage the connector. So we'll just have to cut off one of these ends and solder it up. It does have this little mount that insulates it from the flight controller, so it's going to be facing down. So the transparent PPU, you can see through there. So it's going to be kind of tricky to get it in here. As you see, I've Kind of got it partially disassembled. I'm going to have to lift this ESC up, and I'm probably not going to be able to get that on video. But hopefully I'll be able to wiggle that in there into the space, and then uh, we'll just solder the rest of it up. Verify that it works, and I'll just assemble that. All right, so I'm just going to solder these three wires up. We'll check to make sure that power's on, and then uh, we should be all set. Got the trusty Kester solder. Don't leave home without it. I'll try to get this on camera. So I have this flight controller mounted uh, backwards. So it's rotated, what, 180 degrees. So the three pads that you're looking for, if you can see those, are these three LED pads. So five volt ground and LED. Let's get these trimmed and tinned. I like to leave slack. I don't know. I don't know if I want to leave that much slack. Should be sufficient. To leave a lot of exposed wire. All right, good enough. Let's see if I can get these guys away from everything so we don't burn any plastic or other wiring. Looks like they're not going to cooperate. Make sure your iron's getting clean. I am by no means a professional, but my joints look pretty decent. We'll just get a bit here on the iron. And then we'll get a bit on each. You don't want the iron too hot because it'll burn all the flux up, but you also don't want it too cold because you don't want cold joints. Keep the joints lit and uh, keep them hot, right? 
So then I'm just going to tin these three pads up. Add some more fresh solder because looks like the other is already cached. Ground is finicky as always. All right, let's get so this is where disassembly might have been. I might have made the job easier, but I'm not about that life. Hmm. Yeah, like I said. Looks good enough. All right, and now for ground. Yeah, ground is always a pain in the butt because it the board shares ground, common ground, so it's just a much bigger connection, I guess, than the rest of the board. So ground, if you're new to the hobby, is always the hardest to solder, typically. Some fresh on here. This is just a really, really awkward angle to come in through. I'm gonna fudge on them. All right, that looks good. I was gonna say like doo doo, but it actually looks pretty decent there. It's just the standoff is in the way. That's what I'm struggling with here. All right, nice and shiny. All right, Let's see if you can see how transparent that TPU is. It's a really snug fit. So I'm gonna show you the changes that you need to make on your radio for you to change the LED color. It's pretty simple, as well as be able to turn it off. So we're gonna use a potentiometer. You may be able to use this with a three position switch, but for today's tutorial, we're gonna use potentiometer. I have two here on the jumper bumblebee. We're gonna use the one here on the left. So we're gonna go into the uh, model page. All right, we're gonna go into the mixer tab. We're gonna create a new mix. Now I'm gonna use mine on channel nine because that's the first available mix that I have. Yours may be different just depending on how you have your uh, quad set up. So we're going to select channel nine. I'm going to go ahead and name this one LED. And for the source, like I said, we're going to use this uh, potentiometer here on the left, which is going to be, looks like S1. Okay, we can go ahead and back out of that. And that's pretty much all we're going to need to do on our radio. We're going to use this potentiometer here on the left side to manipulate the LEDs. We're going to configure Betaflight to change colors with the LEDs and potentially set up the Larson scanner. And I'll show you what that is here in a moment. So you're going to connect your quad to Betaflight. The first thing you need to make sure is that the LED tab is enabled in the configuration page. So you're gonna scroll down, make sure that the LED strip is enabled, and you're gonna hit save. You're gonna reconnect, and then you're gonna go down to the LED strip tab. I couldn't find any information online about this. I downloaded the CLI dump from the, the Bind and Fly SpeedyB, and I was able to get this figured out. You're gonna to have to add more LEDs if you have the LEDs on the side. 
I just have the one mounted below the ESC. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the wire ordering mode. You're gonna select the first one and then you can hold down the command key on a Mac. I assume it's control on a Windows PC. You can actually drag across and you're gonna get up to 19 because there's actually 20 addressable LEDs with this one. So you're gonna have 19 of those selected. And uh, you can go ahead and cut of this. You're going to change this to arm state for the function. You can pick whatever color you want it to start out at. It doesn't really matter. It's gonna cycle through all the colors, I believe. So if you wanna use the Larson scanner, I'll show you what that is here in a moment. Basically, it just pulses through all a sequence of LEDs. Or, you know, if you just wanna have the blinking always, you can select that. But I like the Larson scanner. It kinda of gives like a Knight Rider effect from Kit, if you're not old enough to know what Knight Rider is, show you a little clip. But that's what it reminds me of. We're gonna use aux five, right? Because that's what we determined um, is gonna be channel number nine, which in this case for me is aux five. And I'm gonna show you how to check that here in a moment, but I'm confident that it's aux five. And then enable that while they're all selected. And then I'm gonna use the Larson scanner because that's what I like. Go ahead and hit save. Now we're gonna go into I'm actually gonna power on my radio. Welcome to HTX. We're gonna to go to the modes tab. So you're gonna hit add range. You can leave it on auto, and then you can just use the switch that you wanna to assign to that channel, or that switch rather, which is gonna be aux five. So as you see, the little yellow line is going back and forth. That's the state that my potentiometer's in. So you're gonna to wanna to make the off, I assume you're gonna to wanna to make it on the low here. So it's over here at a thousand. So you're just gonna adjust this range and bring it over here. To where it's a thousand. And then you can hit save. And now when it's at 1000 or the lowest point on the potentiometer, the LEDs will be turned off. So if you want to disable the LEDs. Now to test that everything's working, I'm gonna plug a battery in. I do have props off. Safety first, that's what Captain Safety says. And we have nothing. But that's because my potentiometer is in the low position. If I am to cycle it up, and go higher in the range. As you see, the color is changing. It's cycling through all the available colors. What I was telling you before, this pulsing effect is called the Larson scanner. You don't have to enable that, right? We can go back into the LED strip tab and we can make a change to that. So we're gonna have to reselect everything Make sure you select all of them or turn the Larson scanner off, hit save. And as you see, the LED is no longer pulsing, right? It's just bright and full color, or you can go to off, right? So that's completely up to you what you want to do. Actually, I may like the Larson scanner disabled better or we can change it to blink always. So we'll just hit save and it's a pulsing flash. If you wanna do some drones over New Jersey stuff, which I wouldn't recommend, you can choose blink always. That's not what I'm gonna do. I think I may actually leave this just to the permanent LED, just because in the sky, I think it's gonna be easier to see. And then we'll hit save. Hopefully this video was informative and you learned everything you need about how to set up LEDs in Betaflight as well as on your Edge TX or OpenTX radio. I want to thank you again for tuning in 
And as always, guys, we'll catch you in the next one.